but also have plenty of time to answer any questions that you have. So the presentation this evening is pretty brief with um, really prioritizing questions. I'm already really proud of how many people are on the call. Thank you so much um, because this is so important. And um, we're gonna get started. Uh, we are here tonight to go over um, how we are gonna approach making sure that incompletes from last year trimester three are resolved such that students earn credit and exemptions. Um, if you have not chatted in your full name and the name of your student, please do that uh, privately to Mr. Bowerly. Again, I'm the principal, Ms. Keene, and Mr. Bowerly is here. He supervises grades 11 and 12. And I do believe we also have our uh, new assistant principal, Mr. Ogle, who supports uh, the social emotional side of our work and supervises our counselors, et cetera. Um, so today we're just going to quickly review the actual policy for T3 end of term in case you forgot from last year. Um, we're going to go over the timeline as it stands now. We're going to talk about some supports that we've put in place um, and our approach to resolving these incompletes. And then you're going to have an opportunity to ask questions. At any point while you are watching this presentation, you should go ahead and just chat questions directly to Mr. Bowerly so that you don't forget them. I encourage you to do that. As a question comes up, just go ahead and chat it to him directly. And, um, and then when we get to the Q&A, he's just gonna go through the questions, anything that we can answer. So just to review, this is the policy from last year, trimester three. And just to preview what's coming, this is the same policy that we'll be using um, as an end of term policy for this current trimester. So if your student ends up with any failing grades, trimester one, it's gonna be the same thing. So basically um, we don't want student GPAs and transcripts to be disrupted as a result of the crisis that we find ourselves. Um, and as a result, as, an, as I know that you know, a lot of flexibility has been given um, our policy mirrors the DOE um, very closely. And so if a student's final grade would damage their GPA in any way, they receive a P if it's above 60, uh, if it's 65 or above, okay? They get a P, a P for pass. If their, um, their passing grade would not damage their GPA, right? Um, then they're gonna get that numerical value. And so you guys don't have to make any decisions about this. We do all the math and it ends up, uh, you know, protecting the trajectory that our artist scholars are on. And nobody deserves to have their post-secondary future or their high school career severely disrupted as a result of this. We still need students to do the very best that they can, um, but this passing policy prevents um, a grade like a 68 or a 70 from really uh, negatively impacting a student who's worked really hard, um, perhaps has experienced hardships as we all have during this time. Every single person's experienced hardship. So that's why this policy is in place. And again, it mirrors almost exactly the DOE and what they're doing. Now, if a student does fail, um, and that's why we're here. So we're here tonight because your student earned a failing grade in a class, which uh, per this policy is not marked as a failing grade. It's marked as an incomplete, an NX. NX stands for incomplete. And um, we really did everything that we felt and were able to do this summer to try to support students with NXs. Um, we still have 122 students who have incompletes. Um, and that's, that's a number we got to get down. And I know that we can because we have a strategic plan to do it. I just need to make sure that everyone's clear that we're running out of time. That being said, our approach is that if we go hard for a shorter period of time with a lot of support, it's more likely that the kids are going to get the work done 
then it's spanning this huge uh, bit of time. That's what our experience has taught us, trying to get this done over the summer into this year. So now as we near towards the end of the time that we have, um, I'm confident that we can get this 122 down, hopefully to zero, so that all students get the credit and the exemptions that they possibly can. All right, so just a couple reminders. Um, students, this is really important. I'm gonna to talk directly to you right now because I see a lot of you are on here, okay? When your teachers tell you that you need to complete work um, and when you're emailed what you need to complete, just remember, this is about getting to the passing threshold and stopping there. I need you focusing on your current work in trimester two. So once you do enough to pass, you wanna stop. This is not about, oh, I need to make up every little assignment that I didn't do last year, right? We just want you to make up an assignment that will help you get to pass because then you're gonna get a P anyway. None of you, uh, you know, should be stressing about getting all of the work done that you didn't do last year, trimester three. So when you're talking to your teachers, they should be saying to you, Hannah, this is the assignment that's gonna get you to pass. And if they're not saying that, then you need to ask them. Ms. Keen, what is the, what is the simplest, most straightforward way for me to complete work to pass? Okay. Um, Yep, we can move on. All right, what are the supports that are in place right now um, and through January 1st, well, sorry, through December 23rd, every Wednesday, you guys know you can go to R1 Reflection from 1 to 145 and the links are included in the email that we're about to look at together and the information that's gonna be mailed to parents. All right, so that's one option. Another option is that on Wednesday, December 16th, that's a Wednesday, uh, we're gonna redesign the day so that it's all about making up work if you have work to make up from last year, trimester three. It's all it's gonna be about. Targeted intervention for you. And most of you have very, very little to do in order to bump that 62 to passing, right? And so if you show up, if you show up at R1 now through December 23rd, if you show up at this makeup day, I know that you can get, you can bang this stuff out. All right. And then the other thing is we're about to show you, and Mr. Barrley, you can move to the next slide. We're about to show you what we are emailing you so that this is as simple and straightforward as possible. So this is an example of what's going to be mailed home via certified mail as well as what students are receiving in their email. So it lists what assignments are missing and the teacher and the link to the classroom and the link to the R1 reflection every Wednesday at one o'clock. Now, if you look at this example, okay, it's a lot, uh, there's a list of, of the different assignments. What's gonna happen when students dialogue with their teachers is that their teachers are gonna be strategic about saying, okay, well, I see that in survey of the arts, you have these missing process tasks, these missing product tasks. I'm gonna have you complete the TikTok project. That's enough for you to pass. So Hannah, I want you to focus on completing the TikTok product project. That's the way that this is gonna work. It doesn't necessarily mean that the student has to complete every single assignment. So again, students, you can be strategic in completing assignments that you think are gonna push you over to passing. And then if your teachers, uh, when you meet with them, if they're not telling you directly what is the most strategic thing to focus on, you need to ask, okay? But again, it's not about, oh, I have to do every single little thing. Some of you may have to do more than others, depending on what your current grade is. Some of you have a 64 in a class. Some of you have a lower grade than that, so you're gonna have to do more to pass uh, the, the, the threshold, the 65. 
So what we're trying to achieve here and absolutely can, again, if you show up at R1, if you take this um, makeup day seriously, and if you communicate with your teachers, um, you can get whatever you need to get done by Wednesday, December 23rd, which would be ideal because then you can have a chill holiday break, which you deserve. And also um, we really won't have any supports after that time because it'll be the holiday. So it would be ideal if you get, you know, what you need to get done, done uh, by Wednesday, December 23rd. Um, and I really hope uh, that you do. And I believe that you can. Um, that being said, right, you do technically have, next slide, until January 1st to complete um, your incompletes. All right, but we're, we're worried that if you don't get this done by the 23rd, that you're gonna go into the holiday and you're gonna possibly need help and your teachers are gonna be on vacation and so on and so forth. Now, getting credit is one part of this, but this exemptions piece, I really wanna stress because nobody likes taking a test. Um, New York State canceled the Regents exams, you know this, last year for June uh, and August, okay? So, and students earned exemptions if they had earned two credits in the corresponding class. An exemption on their transcript shows up as an E, which is equivalent to a 65 on the exam. Recently, in case you didn't know, um, New York State also canceled this coming January's Regents exams. And this gives students the capability to continue to earn exemptions with the trimester three incompletes. That's a lot, okay? But basically what I want you to get from that is, again, why is this so important? Because students still have the opportunity to receive an exemption uh, on a Regents exam, which means students, if you get an exemption, what that word means is you don't have to take the Regents. It's counted as if you took it and got a passing mark. And that's, you know, you deserve these flexibilities right now. It'd be ridiculous if you were expected to take these tests, but you're not gonna get the credit or the exemption if you don't complete enough work to pass with a 65 or higher, okay? You can do it. Go to R1, contact your teachers. And remember, Mr. Barely, myself, Mr. Ogle, anyone on the leadership team, if you're ever asking for help and you're not getting an answer, you need to tell us right away so that we can help make sure that an email didn't get lost or something like that. Um, and just really quick to add on what this team was saying. Um, yes, while the exemptions are extremely important for you to get the five regents exams you need to graduate, you also need the 44 credits to graduate. Um, and we all know with different things going on, um, there are some courses that you can't afford to not earn all the credits for in order to graduate on time, that right now having the chance to still make up these incompletes gives you that opportunity to get all of the credits you need to graduate. And um, for those of uh, the students that weren't promoted to the next grade level because they didn't have the credits in time, you earning these credits will be able to get you promoted faster to the next grade level. So at the end of the term, um, let's say you have only had 20 credits and you need 22 to be promoted to 11th grade. If you earn those two additional credits from the incompletes, you can be promoted mid-year to the next grade level. Um, so that is another important part, um, especially for juniors and seniors, every single credit matters. Um, and then the other thing that I just wanted to point out for students that don't make up the work for um, the incompletes, what will happen is all of those NXs will change on students' transcripts to NCs, meaning no credit. So it doesn't mean that they just disappear from a student's transcript. It just gets reported um, that the student earns no credit for the class, which means they didn't complete the work for the class. Okay, so uh, Mr. Barley, can you just be clear about when did you email the students the information? Um, so the last time students were emailed the information is October 28th, but I will be emailing them again once after this meeting. 
Um, so that actually was one of the questions. So every single student will get a table like this in their email. Um, obviously the courses and the assignments will be different for each student, um, but they will get the individual information that they need with the link to the R1 reflection, the link to the Google Classrooms. So we're not sending the students the actual links to the assignments, but we're sending them the names to the assignments and where to find the assignments. Um, so that is the main point to uh, know, but at the end of this meeting, we will reshare all of those emails um, to students, so it will be fresh in their email um, box. And as Ms. Keene said, we will also be mailing them home. So parents are aware of all of the assignments that students need to have completed as well. Okay, and if I was a caregiver, I would, so Mr. Barrelly, when exactly are you, are you gonna send them right after this meeting or tomorrow morning? Uh, for just students? Mm -hmm. Students will be sent directly after this meeting. It's all set up that once I hit end on this meeting, they will be emailed out. And then on Monday, um, we will be mailing the letters home to parents. Yeah, so if I was a caregiver, I would, um, after this meeting, have my, my student, you know, let me know when they get that email. And um, I recommend students, you forward the email to your parents uh, unfortunately, there is a law that um, prevents us from um, emailing parents directly this information. Um, but parents can absolutely have their student forward the email to their email. And then again, we're going to mail this directly to you on Monday. Other questions, you can start chatting them. Um, one of the questions is this addressing June 2020 or the current school year? This is talking about last um, spring from when we first went to remote trimester through any incomplete um, that the student has. Are there any other questions? Um, what I will say is if for some reason you um, think of a question later on or your child doesn't get the email um, or you have any other concerns about graduation progress, things like that, um, this is my email address and this is my cell phone number. If you want to take it down, um, I will also put it in the chat. Um, Um, I just got a good question about support in person. So let me just um, use this moment to give you a little bit of, of information as to where we are with that. Um, right now, we're not doing hybrid learning formally on campus. As you know, like the campuses are shut down. And the earliest that we would start a hybrid model where students are coming for, for in-person support is um, January 19th, and I'll let you know uh, by the fourth. That being said, we have staff that are doing um, modified home visit type situations, um, checking in in person. And if that's something that you feel would be really helpful, um, let me know and we can see if there's someone who uh, can do that. But in terms of on site, on campus, in person interaction, um, that's not happening as of right now. But of course, we're doing Zoom meetings, right? So absolutely, if students want and need support virtually in person, they want to go to R1 Reflection. That's the one o'clock time on Wednesdays. And then on the 16th, that makeup day will all be Zoom focused. You're live with the teacher, et cetera. Um, I hope that that's helpful. All right, guys, um, we're gonna stay on. I'm gonna stay on. If you feel like you just wanna chat after everybody leaves, feel free to stay. Listen, we can do this, but it is gonna take some real um, attention to getting it done. And I really know that we can. Most of the kids, the biggest, the biggest misunderstanding is this idea that I have to get all of these things done, okay? That, that is not a good strategy right now. 
the best strategy is you need to stay focused on your current classes in T2 and get the, the whatever the little most strategic, simplest thing is to get a passing grade from T3, that's what you're doing, okay? So don't get all overwhelmed with all of the assignments. The first thing you should do is contact your teacher and say, who, uh, what is the most strategic thing for me to complete? And you can do that over email. You can do that by going to R1. You can do that by going to the makeup thing. They will give you that information, but uh, students and caregivers, I encourage you to reach out to the teachers on this document directly. You can always CC me or Mr. Barely and say, I need to know exactly what the assignment is that I should prioritize completing. That will get me to a 65 or higher, the fastest and most simplest way. So you wanna use that language. It's certainly what we're using with our team and that's our strategy, we can do it. All right, thank you for being here. Um, it's always great to see you. We're gonna keep getting through this time. Just remember um, we are and we will and change is constant. Take care of each other, the most important thing is that we take care of each other, okay? We're gonna be remembered by how we persevere through this time, not by our test scores right now, okay? But yet, we still need to make sure that you're on track to graduate because it is not fair for anything to take you off that course unnecessarily, all right? So we're here and anyone that needs to stay on, feel free. Otherwise, you may leave at this time um, and this was recorded. So we will share out this PowerPoint uh, for you all and students remember Mr. Barely is about to send you your info. Okay, so forward that to your parent and reach out to your teachers. Thank you. Students too, feel free to chat. Uh, feel free to chat us um, if there are any students that have questions about how this is going to work. <laughs> 